So what are we fishing for today, David? Well, we're going to try to get lingcod. That would be the ideal fish. But more than likely, we'll get the combination of blue cod, yellowtail rock cod. Uh, a vermilion would be really nice. They're, they're really uh, fun to cook, and it makes a really nice presentation. They're so scarlet red. Is, and is, it, a rock fi- is it a yeah, rockfish It's also? a rockfish, yeah. And, in fact, the, the rockfish species are becoming depleted, so there will be a lot of species that we have to throw back. Huh. But we'll see. So there are a lot of regulations. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. What's what? Are, give me an example. I mean, how many fish are we allowed to take? We're allowed today? ten fish in combination with two halibut, two lingcod, or two salmon. But the salmon season is over, so that's a big point. So what's the best? What are we hoping to catch? What's the, ideally rockfish? But what's the the best type? Lingcod. Lingcod. Lingcod, baby. And what's <laughs> what does that look like? Oh, it's a toothy creature, a bulky head tapering down to a slim tail. Uh, it can be uh, uh, copper, very deep, almost penny copper, bright, brand new penny copper, to a, a blanched white. And uh, the, the turquoise ones are really pretty. And how are we going to catch all these fish today? Well, we'll probably, you'll probably be using a rig, a, a shrimp fly rig, and you're limited to two flies and then a weight at the bottom, probably about eight ounces. And you'll go down to the bottom reel up about three or four turns you're going to try to stay close to the bottom that's where the big link cod are and then uh, if you're going to target the smaller rock cods like the blue cod or the uh, the yellowtail they're they're suspended and you'll come up once you find where they're suspended then you'll keep targeting that area so David and I are out here fishing and it seems to be doing okay is that what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what's happening right now David well, we, we're, we're encountering a pretty strong drift, so it's hard to keep it, the bait on the bottom. Um, we've got a lot of incidental fish, smaller fish, but uh, we're still trying to get the big guy. They don't seem to be hitting this by itself, so I'm going to sweeten it up and put a little bait on, the, on this one single hook and see how I do that. You just bait it on the hook so that it still flutters. That enhances the bait. Oh, yellowtail. Nice olive. Yeah, it's a nice fish. So what, which one is this? This is a bluefish. Bluefish. That's a gopher cod. Gopher cod. Both of Yeah. I have two of those. Only two gophers. Yeah, only two gophers. But do they count towards your 10? Yeah. They do. Yeah. What do you got, Matisse? I don't know. I got something big. Unless I got someone else's. Keep reeling. Oh, man. Ask the guy for help. This is a oh, yeah, that was it easy. <laughs> no, it's it's right on. Yeah, it's right, it's right on. on. Yeah. So, David, what is this? It's Link a link cod. And it has, and to, be it has to be 24 size. inches. Now, you, you'll notice the color, that nice turquoise color. How about the teeth? When you, when you cook it up, it turns white. You know, we get, some days we get an exceptional amount of bottom fish, which, which is kind of a bonus. Huh. Yeah. You know, I've been doing it for 20 years, so and that's what it makes it look. So, you got to have a sharp knife, too. Much right, let me flip it over. Like in Monterey, if you eat fish in Monterey, they sell this as a rock cod. That's a snapper. <laughs> so what did you think about uh, this? Was this a good catch for everyone today? Yeah, for everyone, yeah. Pardon? Definitely. We get limits every day. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, every day. <laughs> I just went out for the fun of the What's the, When's the last time you saw someone catch a really big fish out, out, out of a tumor? Uh, a tumor? It was a 23-pound link cod three days ago. 
Okay. Just like a gardener goes and picks different vegetables, um, the ocean <laughs> has lots of different types of, of rock fish. Good analogy. Yeah. We have yeah. a good assortment here. Tell yeah. us about these, David. Now, the ceviche is prepared with this gopher cod. Note how small it is compared to the larger species. A gopher cod typically doesn't get much bigger than this. Now this is a it's sweet a beautiful crustacean. color, nice orange yeah. color, and the flavor you said that that's going to be sweet. A sweet, a sweet fish because of its diet. Yeah. So the gopher cod it only eats mainly crustaceans. crustaceans. It, it, okay. it lives among the rocks and it eats baby crabs. Now here's blue cod. Now while we were fishing for the squid, trying to get the squid, we ran into a lot of little blue cod, and this is kind of a medium-sized fish. This is a great fish to fry, uh, broiling fish. And again, you can see the similarities in the flesh, but this has more blood to it. It's, it's a freer swimming fish. It has wider range. Now we get into the, what we call the, the red snapper. It's not a true snapper, but this is a vermilion cod. And uh, he's taken the scales off, so it's kind of blanched out a bit. But when it's covered in scales, it's a crimson red. It's a gorgeous fish. We're going to be barbecuing this. And then we come to the lingcod. This is the ultimate rock species of fish. Very mild flavor, good firm flesh, lends itself to a variety of ways for preparation. I'm making a little uh, marinade. It's a garlic, chili powder, olive oil, salt and pepper. And you're gonna roast this whole? We're gonna roast this whole. If I've already scored it, and uh, I'll work the marinade into the cavity and into those uh, scored sections, and then let that sit for at least 10, 15 minutes. So, so the, the fish has been cut open, um, and all the it's been viscerated, all exactly. the entrails have been removed, the gills yes. have been removed, yes. and it's been descaled. Right. And so it's basically ready to, ready to go, except you need some kind of, you, you can add a little extra flavor to it. This fish, the vermilion, salt and pepper, simply salt and pepper, a little bit of olive oil, Fantastic. And it's just so fresh, you want to highlight that freshness. Exactly. And the rest of the fish, you just rub the marinade into the flesh. Now, it, when we do cook it, I've got some herbs in my garden, and you put that right on, right before taking it off the grill. So the herbs stay nice and fresh. Exactly. Just a hint of flavor, color. Nice presentation. That what is ceviche for our folks at home? Now it's lime or lemon cured fish. You. So it's not cooked, it's just cured. The, the acid in, in the lemon will, in essence, cook it. Now you, you can see the color of the, the filet. When you put it into the, the, the lime juice, it, it'll change colors, and that's the cooking process. This is the uh, the vegetable portion of that ceviche dish. So these are nice little pear, ye yellow pear, golden exactly. pear tomatoes. Yeah. My herbs back there, I dried uh, a little bit of sage, rosemary, and oregano. Now add a, I'll add just a little bit of dry items, fresh jalapenos, excellent. Now what is this? Is a jalapeno? Jalapeno, a ripe one. It's sweeter. Drain the uh, lime juice. Now I'm going to rinse it because you want to taste the fish. You don't want to see. You don't want to have fish floating in a, in lime. You can see the fish changed colors. It's, yeah, it's you'll see how it's firm. Firm. it's cooked. You pick it up and it's it's got some texture. Taste it. It doesn't taste raw. Now you just incorporate that. Ideally, at this point, you would want to let this sit so the fish starts taking on the flavors of the tomatoes, garlic, and onions. Now your cilantro is going in at the very end. At the very end. You want this really fresh. It's going to impart its little cilantro magic right at the end. Now, if, if I was gonna, if I made a big batch of this, I would I would add the cilantro right before I eat, like exactly. just the, the portion that you're exactly. gonna eat. Otherwise, it becomes very limp and uh, it tends to lose its its potency. At the top, sprinkle some around. 
Yeah, just garnishing a little bit of fresh oregano. It's a really good combination with the uh, cilantro. Now we're going to do this lean cod on papio. All right. In a, in a pouch. In a pouch. So this is a great way to cook. Um, what are you doing here, David? I'm creating, making a little pouch. This is heavy duty tin foil, very thick. And uh, it's going to have some liquid, so you have to fold the edges so you can trap that liquid in there. Now the liquid trapped in there is actually going to steam the vegetables. And the vegetables in there, that's just? Um, broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots. And so you're just putting in a little... Yeah, just a dash of sherry. Salt. Pepper. What are you putting in? A little rice vinegar. Oil and vinegar. Sesame yeah. oil and rice wine vinegar. Right. Anything else? I'm going to put a dash of marsala. That'll marsala. sweeten it up. And create the liquid to uh, steam it. Ooh, the smell from that is amazing. <laughs> now, when you make your barbecues, you're not using the the pressed blocks, the, the pressed uh, charcoal, right? Mm -hmm. Oh no, 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 no. That's that's a petroleum product. So, if you like the taste of oil, motor oil, <laughs> not the good kind of oil, go ahead, knock yourself out. But this is this is gonna real a real fire essentially. We're going with the oak. And that imparts a little bit of a, an oak flavor to the fish. I'm originally from the Southwest, mesquite. Oh, there's nothing like a mesquite hmm. flavor to it. It's, it's, it lends itself more better to meat. meat. Yeah. yeah, red meat. But for a mild fish, hickory's good. So you're going to just touch it, and you can see that it's, it's nice and firm. Yeah, firm. That's if it was spongy, yeah, it, it's undercooked. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, uh, that is gorgeous. And that juice with some oh, yeah. little French oh, yeah. bread. Oh. Yeah, but if you really want to do, uh, really do something nicely, you take this juice, put it in a hot pan, just a dollop of butter. Monte a beurre. There you go. Wow, David, I had a great time today. We went fishing. We got a tour of your, your glass studio. You made some, some uh, beautiful... Uh, glass, uh, I think it was a paperweight yeah. for us, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, and now we're going to sit down and eat this wonderful food. I mean, you're just a, a true gourmet. <laughs> I just enjoy what I do. I really do. And if it's fresh, if it's something that I can grow and put together myself, it just makes it that much A lot of the stuff is from your garden. I mean, exactly. It's, exactly. And the fish, it was swimming in, in the ocean less than three hours ago. We were lucky it was as calm as it was today because there was a storm front moving in and as you know on the way back it got a little rough. It did get a little rough on the way so back. we yeah. lucked out. It was a great day and you know how to fish. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I learned from the best. So. Okay. Well let's sit down and eat. This, Excellent. Is, this is wonderful.